Hello everyone. Welcome to Tech and Target. I am Hemant. So from this video onwards, we will be solving previous year TCS code vita coding questions one by one. So let's get started. So the first question says, so uh, the question is named as dancing pandas. So the question says that there are n pandas are invited to a party where they dance in a circular format. Now the dance requires them to constantly change their positions after every second. All right. Now the change of position is not random, but follows a pattern. So they say that uh, N pandas will be there. They will be invited for a party where they should be dancing. Right. And they also say that, so while they are dancing for every second, they need to change their positions after one second. Right. And they also say that, the change of position will not be just random, but instead it follows a certain pattern. Now, uh, the if we go on continuing to read the question, the question says, so consider n is equal to 6 and an array of p is equal to 3, 6, 5, 4, 1, 2. So array is one indexed. So this is very important. You have to keep this in your mind while writing your code. Uh, the, because uh, generally arrays indexing begins from zero, but in this case, they are telling you that array is one index based and is the dancing pattern. So are, uh, this given P array will be the dancing pattern. Okay. So value of PI indicates the new position of the panda who is standing at the ith position. Okay. So they say that you will be given a value of N and an array P and uh, which is you know uh, one indexed so that means so you will the indexing in this particular array begins from one not from zero and they also mentioned that so the value of p of i indicates that what so p of i will be the uh, the position of the current uh, panda in the next second so where i is the current position uh, p of i will be the position of the panda at ith position at next second so this will get much more clear while we you know see the example test case okay so i i is the current position p of i will be the position of your panda at i position in the next second right so that's what you have to keep in your mind for as of now now they say that so given an uh, given n and the array p you have to find the time so find the time after which all the pandas are in the initial positions for the first time. So you have to find the time instant at which uh, all the pandas will be in their initial positions, right? So if we go and see the input and output format, so they say that the first line contains a single integer t denoting the number of test cases, all right? So there will be t number of test cases and for each test case, you will be given an integer n and an array p all right so which is having length n and the indexing of this array begins from one now output format the output format will be so t lines for each test case we have to print a line which denotes the minimum number of seconds after which all the pandas will be in the initial position now we'll move to the next side so before solving this question, there are some few prerequisites to solve this question. So one of which is, so you have to know how to solve GCD of two numbers. So let's say you are given A comma B. So you should be able to find out what is the GCD of uh, A comma B, right? So this is a prerequisite for this problem to be solved because I'll not be explaining the code for uh, how to find out the GCD of two numbers. So with this assumption, so if you do not know how to solve GCD of two numbers, then please go ahead and try to come up with the solution of GCD of two numbers. So with the assumption that you know GCD of two numbers, I'll be uh, moving forward. And after this, so there is a mathematical property which says GCD of A comma B multiplied with LCM of A comma B will be equal to the product of the numbers A, a and B. So this is a property. So uh, now we will use this property to find the LCM of a, a and B, right? So how do we find A and B here? So LCM of A comma B will be 
so this a into b that divided by so this g gcd of a comma b where if it is multiplying in the left side if it comes to the right side right hand side then that will be dividing right so that will come to your denominator now we have the formula lcm of a comma b will be a into b divided by gcd of a comma b so so before go, moving on to the problem so please go ahead and learn how to solve the gcd of two numbers and let's get uh, let's move forward right now so with this test case uh, if you see here so there is this is t there uh, there is only one test case and this is the value of n so which denotes the number of uh, you know pandas now which denotes the number of pandas and this is a p array which denotes the position of the current panda at the next second right so the output should be 6 now let's see how we are getting the 6 right now so if we move here so let's say uh, the, we we are told that there are six uh, six number of pandas so we'll write 1 2 3 4 5 and then 6 and we are given the pra so this is your pra right and at time 0 let's let us consider the order of uh, uh, pandas will be a b c d e and f right at time is equal to 0 so at position 1 a will be there position 2 b will be there position 3 c position 4 d position 5 e and position 6 f now at time is equal to 1 what will happen the element at this position at the element at one position will be moved to the third position now what is the element at first position it is a so this a will be moved to the third position which is here so this will be moved here so a this a will come here now at the element at position 2 will be moved to the position 6 so this b will move here so to the sixth position now at uh, you know the element at position 3 which is c as of now will move to the fifth position so this c will come here now the element at position 4 which is d will stay as it is because uh, it is you know this the current position and the uh, p of i is same so the current question and p of i is same so this will not change now the now so this is the uh, this is 5 and this is 1 so the position the current position is 5 and the element will now be moved to the first position what is the current element at position 5 here it is e so this e will be moved to the first position so this e will come here right now the current position is 6 and the element at position now the position at element 6 is f so this element will be moved to the second position in the next time next time iteration so this f will come here now after one iteration this will be like this so a b c d e f will now become e f a d c b and when time is equal to 2 now the element at position 1 is e now this e will move towards position 3 because uh, we have p of 1 as 3 right right so that will come here now at position 2 we have f but that will move to position 6 so this f will come here in the time is equal to 2 now position 3 we have a and this will move to fifth position now if we come to fifth position so we have a here so this a will be moved here now since this 4 and this 4 is equal so we don't need to do anything in this iteration for d right now at position 5 we have uh, a here now this a will now be moved to uh, first position right so this a will move here so at position uh, 6 we have f and this f will be moved to second position right so this f is moved to second position and if it if you know if we go on continuing like this finally at time is equal to 6 we'll be getting a b c d and ef right so which is same as your uh, when you when the time was zero right so if the initial series is appeared once again then that uh, then at that we have to return that time right so uh, we uh, discovered that when the time was six so we have to just return so six as our answer now uh, we'll move to the second uh, solution which is second example so which is having the number of test cases as one the value of n as three so n is the number of pandas and so these are these are the positions so pra now let's say uh, we are having the positions as one two and three and we are having the elements as uh, you know 
in uh, elements of the areas 3 2 and 1 now the pos uh, the initial uh, positions let's uh, let it be a b and c at time is equal to 0 now at time is equal to 1 what will happen so at time is equal to 1 the position the element at position 1 will now be moved to the position 3 now, what is the element at position 1? It is A. So, that will be moved to position 3. Now, this element will be moved to second position. So, this is the second position. So, this will be stay here. This will be staying here itself. Now, this element will be moved to first position. Now, this element C will move here. Now, is the same as the first uh, when time was 0? No, this is not. Now, when time is equal to 2. Now, what will happen? Let's see. Now, this C will be moved to third position right so this c will be moved to third position so this c will come here now this b will move to second position so which is same so it will be staying in its own place now this a will be moved to first position now we'll check now so is the same as uh, the case when t is equal to zero so when t is equal to zero the series was a b and c now when t is equal to two the series is same a b and c so if that is the case then we will return option uh, i mean uh, the answer as two which is the current uh, time instant right so this is two so that we will return now if that was not the case then we'll go we would have gone for one more iteration as long uh, as long as we do not get the answer so as and when we get the answer we'll directly return from there now so after this now let's say instead of this uh, instead of three two and one what if we were given 3, 1, and 2. So let's try for that example and we'll understand what's going on in the back, background. All right. So now coming, uh, taking one more test case of 3, 1, and 2. Now what will happen? The initial positions let us consider A, B, and C. So this was at time is equal to 0. Now at time is equal to 1, what will happen? So this A will be moved to the third position. So A will come here. B will be moved to the first position. B will come here. C will move to the second position. C will come here. Now, we will check. So, whether B, C, A is same as A, B, C? No, this is not. We will move to the next iteration. Now, this B will be moved to third position. So, this will B will come here. Now, this C will be moved to first position. This will come here. This A will be moved to second position. Now, this A will come here. Now, is C, A, B same as A, B, C? No, it is not. So we'll move for next iteration. Now C will come to third position. A will come to first position. Now this B will come to second position. Now is this ABC same as uh, when T is equal to zero? So it was ABC. So both of them are ABC. So we will return the current time instant, which is three. So the answer for this test case when uh, P is equal to three, one, two will be three so we will directly return three from there so this is how we will solve it but uh, how can we solve this you know using code so we can solve it uh, you know the way uh, actually how i explained so which is you know directly uh, taking some you know two lists and interchanging them uh, and every time if we keep on consider checking whether the given list is similar to the instant when time is equal to zero so that will be the extreme brute force and that may not work when your uh, you know test cases are very large so to a bit of optimize this so what we can do is so instead of calculating uh, if each one uh, at one time and finally checking that so instead of doing this what we can do is so we can we will consider like after how many seconds a is coming to its original position so a's original position is one right so a's original position is one so after how many uh, seconds a is coming to its original place so after three seconds a is coming to its original place right so a is coming after three seconds now after how many seconds b is coming to its original place it is coming to its original place only after at t is equal to 1, b is not at original place, so the, it is not coming. So after t is equal to 3, it is coming to its original place. So b is also coming to its original place at time is equal to 3. Now, what is the first instance at which c is coming in its original position? So this is coming directly at t is equal to 3. So t is equal to 3. Now, 
So we should take the lowest common multiple of all these numbers. So LCM of three comma three comma three will be just three, right? So we will directly return three. So that's what we are doing. Now, what if this is the case of uh, this example? Instead of three one two, what if it was three two one, right? Now let's check that case as well. So I'll quickly write that uh, write that now. So A B C was there. Now this was three two one, right? So instead of three one two, it was three two one. Now when it was three two one, so it was A B C. Then we were having C B A in the time is equal to one. And when time was two, we were able to get A B and C, right? Now, so we have to find out like. Uh, after how many seconds A came to its original position? So after two seconds, right? So when time was zero, A was in its original position. But at time is equal to two, that A came to its original position, right? So A came to its original positions after two seconds. Now B came to its original position just after one second, right? So we should not consider this zero, right? So we should not consider this zero. We should directly move on, check from one, right? So B came to its original position. At first second itself, so we'll write B came at first second itself. Now, what is the time at which C came? So C came at time duration two, right? So here it was not there, so here it came. So at time is equal to two, it came. Now, if we take the LCM of all these things, what do we get? So two, 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 one, and two. If you two take the LCM, we'll get so we'll get two as answer. So we'll return that. Now the same thing applies for this as well. So if you consider this, how many times uh, after how many seconds A came to its original place, B came to its original place, C, D, E, and F. And if you take LCM of all these things, then you will get the answer. So this is what the approach for this question is. So basically, so we will initialize. So I'll tell you the approach now. So how are we going to approach this problem? And then we will directly move into the code, right? So. So I'll, uh, let me erase all of these things so that we'll be getting uh, enough space to write the solution for this. And later we'll move on to the code part, right? So first we'll discuss this uh, approach here. Now coming to the approach. So the com uh, coming to the approach, so what we'll do is we'll initialize a variable called final answer as one. So in the end, we'll return this final answer, right? In the end, we'll return this final answer. Now, in the middle, what we're going to do? So basically, we are having n pandas, right? So we will run for each panda. Now, what did we do? So for uh, there were n pandas. And for each panda, we are checking how, after how many seconds it came to its original positions, right? So we have to do that for n pandas. So for that reason, what we have to do, we have to run a loop from 1 to n. And for each panda, we have to calculate after how many seconds the uh, panda came to its original position. Now, first we'll keep one variable uh, original, right? So we'll keep one variable original and we'll initialize with, okay, now I'll call the variable it as i, right? So I will run from one to n. Now, original position, I'll make it as i and the current position also, I'll initialize it with i. Now to denote after how many seconds uh, the current uh, panda came to its original position, I'll create a one variable called as count to keep a counter of number of seconds, right? So after, after how many seconds this came to its original position. So I'll keep that counter variable here. Now, after this, what I'll do, so as long as I do not get, you know, original as count, I'll keep on looping. So for doing that, I'll create, I use a while loop, right? So I'll use a infinite loop here. And at some point I should have to break this loop, right? So or else it would keep on running. Now, what is the case when I will be breaking here? So I will be breaking from this loop once the original becomes the current, right? So original, so I will stop the moment when this original position will be equal to the current position, right? Now I'll do what? If original position is equal to your current position, then I will break directly from that, right? So this is one thing. So we have written a breaking case. Now what we have to do, so if that is not the breaking case, what we have to do? So we have to update our current, right? So current initially was I. Now in this, uh, after, in the, after one second, what will happen? The current one will move to 
uh, p of i isn't it now see here so currently this was uh, a was here at 1 now this will move to p of 3 so if this is p array so it will move to p of 3 in the next second at when time is equal to 1 so p of 3 is what so p uh, this is your 3 so this will come here right so this is your p array so p of uh, i is getting updated now, if that is P, now we are considering that as current here, right? So for that reason, we will say what? Now the current variable will be P of current, right? So we'll say what? Now, after this, now this happens after one second, right? So for that, we'll increment our count variable, right? So if after I, I'll increment, so first of all, I'll update my current so which will be uh, the uh, so the current variable will be updated to the next position of the current panda right so what will be the next position of the current panda so that will be stored in the current now after storing that i will update my counter so that uh, so uh, after one second this is my current position of the panda now so the moment I reach uh, when the case becomes you know the current panda's position becomes original position so that time i will di directly break from the loop right so after this what i have to do is so i need to update my final answer right so after i come after i come out of the loop i was taking i was taking lcm right lcm of what lcm of the final answer that i have till now that with your count so why we are taking count here so that's what we were taking right so after how many seconds uh, we are taking so initially what we use it to do is we can instead of doing this we can take an array and then that array we can store all the count variables right so for a after how many seconds uh, it reached to its original position let's say three or two or whatever it is we can store it then for b how many after how many seconds it reached to its original position we can store that in you know in an array and then for c after how many iterations or how many seconds it reached to its original position we can store it and so after storing it in an array so we can you know continuously call lcms uh, on uh, those uh, array elements right but instead of doing that so instead of you know wasting an, the space for array so as an optimization so we are directly updating the variable here, right? So we know, so we are initialized our final variable as one. So we can directly take LCM of that final variable with the count variable and your final variable gets keeps on updating after each iteration of your panda, right? After your one panda is done, uh, finding its uh, you know time required to get to its original position, then we'll directly take the LCM of that uh, count variable with the fi uh, you know fi your final answer right so if you take that your, your final variable will uh, get updated for each iteration of the panda and finally you'll be able to return after n iterations you'll be able to return your final answer uh, so which will be the right answer for the question now i hope uh, i was able to make you understand the code now uh, so we'll move into the uh, code editor and we'll write the solution now according to the question they have given so there will the first line consist of an integer t so i have taken it so for each uh, there will be t test cases for each test case there will be given n and will be given an array p now since the indexing begins from one to our confusions have created array of size n plus one and so since indexing begins from one i'll you know i'll uh, here also i'll uh, uh, use a for loop from one right now i'll store p of i is equal to sc dot next in then i'll call the function with n and p as our uh, pa parameters and i will just directly print the answer now as i've told you so there will be uh, lcm and gcd so first of all you'll be able to get lcm by uh, lcm of two numbers a comma b by you know dividing a into b with the gcd of a comma b and how do we get gcd so this is, you know, uh, please go ahead and learn how to find out GCD using Euclidean theorem. So this is how it is done. So please go ahead and learn it. So after this, I'll try to explain you the code now, how, how to write this. So as I've told you, so I'll be using a final answer as a key, uh, final answer. And I will initialize with, with one. And in the end, I will return this final answer, right? So I'll return this final answer. Now, uh, I'll 
start iterating from one till n pandas. I'll keep on incrementing with one, and uh, I'll keep a original position as i and the current position as i and a count variable as zero because at time zero we are here right now. Now what we are doing? So we'll loop, we'll run a continuous uh, loop. Infinite loop, and we will break once we reach the condition if original is equal to current. The moment the current position becomes original position, will directly break. Now, before that, what we will do? If that is not the ending condition, we will update our current variable. Now, the current variable will be so the current variable will be updated to the next position. What will be the next position? The next position will be p of curve, and after that, we have to increment our count variable, right? So this will be, so after one iteration, the value of current becomes something. After two iterations, the value of current becomes something. So, and after doing this, at the moment you, your, you know, your current becomes equal to original back again, then you will directly break. Now, once you break off out of this while loop, what you have to do? So you have to update your final answer, right? So you will update your final answer as LCM of final answer, whatever it is till now that with your count variable. Now, if you do this, now for each iteration of i, final answer is calculated once and directly uh, after this for loop is completed, done, executed uh, completely, then you will directly return your final answer. Now, if we try and uh, run it for some few test cases, let's say, so we'll try for our first case. So which is one, the length of array six, then three, six, five, four, one, and two. So this will give it as six. So which was as expected. And if we go for one more test case, one, three, three, one, two. So this will give me three. So which is again as anticipated. And we'll take one more test case and we'll wind up the session. So one, then three, three, two, one. So this is giving me two. So all, all answers are as expected. So, so this is it for this video. And in the next video, we'll be coming up with one more coding question that was asked in TCS Code Beta. So till then, take care, keep learning. Bye-bye.